Hello, everybody. This is Scott Dudley from SaaS Startup Stories. And today, my special guest is Ross Saboran, who's based in Manitoba, Canada. He's the co-founder at VidDay, which is software that allows you to easily collect video messages and photos to create the best celebration video all in one place. Welcome to the show, Ross. Are you ready to rock and roll? Yes. Thank you so much for having me, Scott. You're welcome. All right, so let's start off with your background and what initially got you interested in starting a SaaS company in the first place. Sure. I've always loved technology and just working with it, playing with it, and it's just been a passion of mine. I was previously at another tech startup called Skip the Dishes. Uh, it's Canada's leading food delivery network. We were ultimately acquired by Just Eat, a FTSE 100 company based out of London. Uh, which actually owns Manilog as well. So that was one of the uh, sister companies that we worked with. So I did have the pleasure of spending a bit of time uh, in Australia to, to help launch delivery. But I'm excited, excited to be working on another project uh, that's more geographically agnostic uh, and looking to forward to seeing where the platform will go. Cool. All right. So in the beginning there, um, did you borrow VC money to launch your software company or did you bootstrap it instead? Instead, tell us a bit about how you got VidDay off the ground in the beginning. Sure. So VidDay started as a passion project uh, and it's largely been bootstrapped. So the original founder, Denis Diving, uh, he really pioneered the, the vision into the reality of, of what it is today. Um, just making it happen off of his laptop. He believed in the product. Uh, he saw the, the tears of joy that recipients had when they received the gift. And he kind of just made it happen and started bringing on uh, the rest of the, the co-founding team and started to build the, the tech and really put it together. We've got a lot of great support from uh, some government grants as well as some private partnerships, such as the AWS Activate program. And these partners have invested into the success of VidDay through things like funding, interest-free loans, access to engineers, discounted rates, credits, and things of that, of that nature. And that's been a, a really big part of our success. Okay, so when did this first launch? So the original uh, vision from Denis was, uh, geez, going back probably, I'd say four or five years. And then okay. it was kind of a passion project on the side of the desk. And then in 2020, we decided to uh, to really go all in and-, and Oh, okay we could take the platform. All right, cool, awesome. All right then, tell me a bit about the actual VidDay product and what it provides its users and, and the pricing tiers as well. Sure, so VidDay is an online platform that makes group video gifts. It's a quick and easy way to make a surprise video montage to celebrate someone's special day. We're helping people from around the world to stay connected digitally and safely. We've received millions of submissions from over 150 countries around the world. Bid days are free to start, and the final price is based on the length of the video. We're currently offering a holiday special where you can get a vid day for as little as $5. It's all about the human connection, and recipients often cry tears of joy when receiving their gift. We also plant a tree for every video that's sold, so it's a really great eco-friendly gift. Mm. And in addition, we make get well videos for, for free in order to help those along their road to recovery. Okay, cool. All right, so how many employees are in the company right now? We've cur currently got around 20 employees, uh, though that number is growing it, uh, every week. This includes software engineers, marketers, copywriters. Um, and six months ago, we had less than a handful. So ah, we're okay. growing very quickly. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we are ensuring that we choose the right people yep. that are well aligned with the business and the fact that we're, we're trying to do good in the world and, and have a positive impact. Yeah, I notice on your website, you're currently hiring and looking for people as well. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, so you personally, do you get involved in the coding side or are you more focused on marketing and, and business development? What's your sort of role? Yeah, so uh, I'm definitely more on the business side. I'm not a developer myself, but I do like to stay current with the, the technical aspects of our platform. Yeah. Um, businesses that go through that hyperscale period uh, have a lot of growing pains. Could be operational, people, financial, and often technical. 
and I've got some experience in other high growth businesses. And I try and help the team think about the technical infrastructure that we'll need at say 10x the volume. Mm. That's things like microservices, serverless approach uh, to make sure that we're building uh, things in the right way that will be able to scale with our volume. And aside from that, uh, I write a lot of SQL. So that's uh, structured oh, okay. everything. Yep. And this data mining allows me uh, and the rest of the team to dig into our data and better understand what's happening in the business, identify some of the opportunities that are out there, even find and squash bugs, and just generally see some of the early trends and indicators uh, that are coming down the pipe. Nice. Yeah, I've got a little bit of experience with SQL. That's uh, actually pretty fascinating programming language. I enjoyed that. I haven't done it for a while though, but uh, okay. Um, yeah, it, it's a pretty interesting skill. I mean, yeah. Uh, if I were to re rewind back maybe 10 years ago, I had never heard of SQL. And as soon as I got introduced to it, it just opened up this world of possibility to me where I could pull out these insights and patterns that uh, I just never knew how to get access to. And it's it's been a very, very powerful tool for me. Okay, I used to use it in Microsoft Access. Like this is going back about 10 years ago um, with the the graphic user interface there with those queries and yeah, I used to find it fascinating sort of how you could pull data and like just manipulate the data with based on the you know the the, the parameters that you put in there so um yeah it's, we've got that in common <laughs> yeah yeah awesome all right um so without giving away any secrets sort of what's your product roadmap for the next 12 to 18 months at vid day yeah, as with any company, not all of our plans are public, but uh, I can say that we've got a lot of really exciting features uh, that we'll be adding to the platform. Most of them are geared towards making the process easier and more rewarding for the recipients, the contributor, mm. as well as the cr creators that are involved in a bid day. Um, as we look towards the future, we want to ensure that we stay ahead of the competition in terms of offering the best and most innovative products that are available. Yeah. And then we're also dedicating a lot of time and resources to ensuring that the platform can, can continue to scale and is robust for handling the heavy requirements associated with storing and manipulating HD video. We tend to be occasion-based. So on holidays, things like Mother's um, Day, we yeah. get these really big spikes. Uh, so we need to keep the infrastructure uh, we'll call it burstable, where when we get uh, all of these uploads and all these uh, heavy uh, demand resources come in that we can kind of scale up. And then from a, a cost optimization perspective that we can also scale back down after. Yeah. I know you're not in the US, but did you get a big spike recently for Thanksgiving in the US? Yeah, so the, it, it's really interesting. We get, uh, we've done videos in over 150 countries around the world. So we get different patterns across different countries, but certainly in the US, Thanksgiving is a, is a really big uh, holiday there. So yeah. we, we just got through that and we're gearing up with some new holiday themes um, for the upcoming uh, holiday season here. So Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Okay, so how are you currently marketing Vid Day to attract new users? Yeah, so one of the coolest things about Vid Day is how uh, our customers themselves actually become our biggest advocates. Okay. So after someone has started a, a Vid Day, they invite all of their friends and family to the platform to make video submissions. Yeah. So through that process, they start to learn a bit about the, the brand and the product. And then when the video is finalized, mm. a copy can be sent out to all the contributors so they see the end result. So this is a really powerful, um, really powerful thing. They see the recipient crying tears of joy, this great reaction. They see all their friends and family saying all these nice things and they really be become uh, advocates for the brand. And that's driven a lot of our organic growth. And then um, being a, a tech orientated business, we use a lot of digital channels um, to also raise awareness we are in a bit of an emerging market. So we have a lot of education, uh, just letting users know that this product exists. Once they're aware of the product and they've tried it, uh, from what we're hearing, they love it and, and they're coming back to the platform. Excellent, yeah, so like the viral referral marketing, that would be um, 
that'd be huge, especially with with the sort of platform that you've got. And um, obviously, that's that's free word of mouth. So um, you'd be lapping that up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I mean, this question's you've pretty much already answered this with the previous response, but. Um, I was going to ask, what are your most successful customer acquisition acquisition channels, and how did you find them? Yeah, that's a great question, and uh, I think all channels are are very important, and they rarely are most effective in isolation. So it's really about how the channels are are working together. Mm. Um, we've seen a lot of success in the awareness phase with things like our blog. Um, so there we have different articles about use cases of, of the product, uh, different ways that people have used Vid Day, whether it's for retirement uh, videos, wedding videos, anniversaries, baby showers, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Uh, in light of social distancing and the new restrictions that are uh, in place in a lot of different countries around the world, we're seeing lots of neat and innovative ways that people are using the platform to stay connected. Okay, nice. All right, so you've got plenty of experience in the SaaS industry. So I was just wondering, what are the most common mistakes that inexperienced software founders make in your opinion or in your ex experience? Yeah, uh, I certainly uh, have a lot of experience in making mistakes, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I've made many of my own. I think I, I would say probably the most common thing that I see is um, is losing focus on core competencies. So startups have very finite resources and a lot mm. of things that they have to get done. Ensuring that you stay laser focused on doing what you do best is so important in the early stages. Now, this shouldn't be confused with not iterating or pivoting because these things will change and you have to be willing to adapt. So it's identifying what you're trying to achieve and then sticking to that, but also allowing that to, to change and be molded by the feedback that you're receiving from, from your uh, customers or the industry itself. But uh, I'd say startups aren't easy. Keep trying. Remember to take a few steps back, ensure what you're doing still makes sense, and then dive back in and make it happen. Yeah, you've made a good point there where you've really got to dive into that customer feedback and find out sort of what people are you know, how they're feeling, what they're experiencing when you're on your platform and um, sort of iterate from there, I guess, and improve based on, on, the, on that customer feedback. So do you like get your customers to do surveys or, or how do you find out sort of the customer satisfaction? Yeah, listening to your customers is so important and it's surprising the amount of businesses that, that don't do it. So we've sent out uh, surveys to our customers. We have... Uh, our customer care team that's available seven days a week, 20 hours a day. And we're in constant, constant communication uh, with the team to know what are customers asking for? What do customers like about the platform? What don't like, don't they like about the platform? Mm. What's How can we improve? Uh, what can we change? We take that feedback, we put it into our, our sprints or our development roadmap. Mm. And we make sure that the initiatives and the features that we're working on are based on what customers actually want. And we've received some really great feedback, some really great uh, initiatives through those channels. And we continue to use that feedback to, to make the platform uh, what our customers want it to be. Okay, so sort of following on from that question, uh, have you got a specific approach for your onboarding to reduce churn? Yeah, so we're, we're still uh, really early in the process. And admittedly, okay. we've got We've got a pretty leaky funnel and we're still building some stickiness into the platform. Yeah. What we've done though, and I touched on it uh, earlier is we've taken the approach of being data informed. So it's a slight variation from the more common data driven approach. Um, what, what we do is we have the mechanisms in place to measure and assess the outcomes of changes that we make, but we don't rely on this data to make all decisions. Using the data as a feedback loop can get circular by reinforcing decisions that you've made. It, however, doesn't give you insight into what would have happened if you tried something new or different. Mm -hmm. This more iterative approach focuses on our intuition, using our gut to make decisions that we think are best for the business. The data either helps to confirm or reject that hypothesis. So we call it failing fast. We try lots of things quickly, 
and move on when they don't work. We're not afraid to make mistakes, but we do learn from them. Okay, that sounds a bit like, uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of Michael Masterson's, M Michael Masterson, who's also, I think his real name's Mark Ford, uh, the book Ready, Fire, Aim. Have you, have you read that or heard of that? Uh, I've not read it, but uh, if you can send me a link afterwards, I'd, I'd love to check it out. Oh, okay, because he pretty much talks about exactly what you're talking about there. And um, yeah, I mean, this guy's made many millions of dollars, so he knows what he's talking about, but <coughs> excuse me. But yeah, I can understand that approach and, and, and um, how you just keep iterating from um, and improving continuously and, and not um, spending too much time procrastinating. It's important to actually take action. So yeah, it mm -hmm. makes good sense. All right, so uh, what was the biggest challenge that you had to face when you first started your SaaS company and how did you go about overcoming it? Yeah, so when I first joined the, the Vid Day team, um, so the, there were some founders that uh, had, had started a, as a passion project um, years before I, I had initially joined. Um, in the first two and a half months after I joined, we grew about a hundred times uh, in that period. Cool. So we essentially broke everything. Uh, we broke our software, we broke our hardware, we broke our people, our processes. <laughs> we essentially had to reinvent everything. Okay. Um, we went from a few people uh, to a team uh, of over 75 employees and, and independent contractors. At that time, uh, the whole platform was not automated yet. And so we had these manual touch points that we needed to do on every video. Um, so yeah, again, from a handful of people to, to over 75 with, with all the independent contractors just to get through it. Um, wasn't easy. We didn't sleep much, uh, but we just broke every issue down into some actionable items that would help us move the needle in the right direction. Uh, we grew the team, we split and refactored the code base, we automated the platform, we reinvented processes. After a few months, we started to see the light at the end of the tunnel and yep. we were able to come up for air and we even took a day off. Nice. Well, I guess that's sort of like a good problem to have, isn't it? I mean, that there could be a lot worse problems than that. And once you get through that, then it's sort of, that's when it starts getting exciting. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I thrive in the chaos and uh, <laughs> and all the things that come with a startup. So yeah. it was a great, uh, great intro for me and uh, I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. Nice. I think in, the, in hindsight, when looking back on it, I think the things that keep me up a little bit at, at night is through those hyperscaling periods, um, you tend to, to miss the mark on a few things. And I always regret the... Uh, the experience that we would have give to, given to some customers, whether it's missing a deadline or, um, you, you know, the little mistakes that are bound to happen. Um, yeah, that's that's part of the process, unfortunately, but um, it, it's good to get a little bit of stability and ensure we can give that that great experience to all of our customers. Yeah, cool. OK, so what are your favorite online tools and platforms that you use to run your business? Yes, we use all sorts of tools uh, and software. Um, so AWS or Amazon Web Services, that's our, our cloud provider. Um, they've been an awesome partner and a great help through this uh, scaling process. So many thanks to them. Uh, for business tools, we use uh, the Google Suite. So that's for email, sheets, docs, video conferencing. And uh, we chatted earlier about SQL. We use Google BigQuery. Uh, for our uh, business intelligence. And uh, in terms of communication, we use Slack. Uh, that's been a really great handy tool for us. And then on the tech side, we use GitLab, Docker, BitComponents, Storybook, uh, to name a few. So uh, yeah, too, too many to list. There's a lot of really great software out there. And it's amazing uh, the, the things that you can do. We recently started using ClickUp as kind of an all-in-one uh, okay. solution. And yeah, it's, uh, it's been interesting learning about all the new products out there. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard a few people have been using ClickUp. That's, that's fairly new, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep, cool. We've seen some good success with it thus far. Okay. Yeah. All right, so what are you curious about or researching right now regarding SaaS and, and software in general? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, things like ClickUp, we're always trying to 
be at the forefront of what's available, um, but not getting too far ahead of ourselves. So sometimes if you go to something that's really, really new, uh, potentially still working out some of the kinks, uh, mm. you can get caught in some, in some tricky positions. So trying to find that balance of uh, companies that are established enough that we can uh, trust and rely on them as a third party provider, uh, but also nimble and advanced enough to uh, to move at the same speed that that we're moving at. Yeah. Then as we're building out some functionality into the platform, um, we, we're building out the concept of a content marketplace, which is basically an area that um, you can add additional media and features into your vid day. And we do look forward to incorporating a lot of other great SaaS uh, into the platform uh, in order to really augment the, the video gifting experience. Would that be something like adding audio to the video or is that? Yeah, it could be something like that. Or for example, uh, a company like cameo.com, let's say. Uh, you could incorporate uh, getting a video from a celebrity from cameo.com as part of your vid day. So we're just ah, okay. in the um, in the early stages of forming those those types of partnerships and building that functionality into the platform. Nice. Okay. All right. So just to wrap up, where can people go to find out more about vid day? Yeah. So they can head over to vidday.com. That's V I vdaycom vidday.com. They can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, and yeah, be sure to check out our new holiday themes. It's a great way to celebrate digitally and safely in light of all the restrictions. And uh, with all the shipping delays expected this year, this will be a great gift that you can give with no delays. Cool. And didn't you mention before that I can get started for free? Uh, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Free to start. Excellent. All right, perfect. Thanks for being on the show, Ross. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you and have a great day. Thanks.